So, so far we've, we've introduced the idea of an absolute or global extreme value. Um, and we've stated the extreme value theorem, which guarantees the existence of these extreme values under some reasonable conditions, namely that our function is continuous and that our domain is a closed interval. Right? So here's the graph of a function which is defined on a closed interval and appears to be continuous. And now that we, we know that these absolute extreme values exist for such a function, the next question to answer is, well, how do we find them? How do we figure out where the absolute max is, where, where um, the absolute min is? Right? And so the first step along the way, we need to introduce some more terminology. And the first bit of terminology that we introduce is the idea of a relative or local max or min. Okay, So local is another term that might get used. Now the definition looks quite technical, um, but it's actually fairly straightforward. Right? So what it's saying is we've got a function defined on some interval, possibly a closed interval, and it contains some number c. Right? So c is a, an x value in the interval. Um, what does it mean to say that your function has a relative maximum at that point c? Well, you know, when we say relative maximum, now we don't necessarily want to say that it's the absolute max. We're not, we don't want to look at the entire domain and say this is the biggest y value on the entire domain. We just want to look at some portion of it, right? And so that's why we introduce this delta. We say, well, okay, if, um, if we can find this delta so that, you know, if we move a little bit, you know, a distance of delta either side of this point C, uh, then uh, f of C is the biggest y value that we, that we find on that interval. That's the idea, right? So we can see that in a couple of places. Certainly here, right, if this is C, right, and here's C plus delta, here's C minus delta, right, then on this portion of the graph, from here to here, that is certainly the largest y value that we see. Now, in this case, it happens that that's also the largest y value for the graph as a whole, right? There is no other y value that's larger, okay? But there are other points on the graph that we might also consider to be a relative maximum, and there's one here, right? So at this point, you know, if I'm a little bit on the other side of that point, there is no other point on the graph where the y value is larger, right? As long as I can find some interval around that point where it's the largest y value that I see, then I'm dealing with a relative max, okay? And of course, uh, you can similarly define a relative minimum to be one where the inequality goes the other way. Like so. Right. And so then we certainly see a relative minimum here. Right. So at this point on the graph, if I move a little bit either side of that point, right, then I'm dealing with this portion of the graph, and it's the smallest y value that I see over that portion of the graph. Right. So again, it's not, it's not necessarily the smallest y value overall. There's a whole bunch over here that are smaller. But for this part of the graph, it's the smallest that we see. That's what we mean by relative, right, or local, right? So we're not looking at the whole domain, just a piece of the domain. So if it's the biggest value on some piece of the domain, you're dealing with a relative max or relative min, OK? Um, so a few things to note. Um, so the first one, which you've probably observed as we've played around with this example, um, is that a relative max min can also be an absolute max min. Uh, the other thing, and it's, it's not immediately obvious from the definition, but the definition allows for um, end values. So 
Okay. So the values that you get at the two endpoints of the interval, um, they also satisfy this definition, right? Because, because of the fact that we put this x as an element of i in there, right? So yes, this normally means that we're moving a little bit on either side of this point c, a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. But if I'm at, say, the point b, right, saying that x minus b is less than delta and x is in i means that I'm just considering, let's say, something like this, right, as my, as my interval, this half open interval, right? And on that half open interval, that is the smallest y value that I see there at the endpoint, right? Same thing over here. I could go from a to, say, a plus delta, and over that piece of the graph, the endpoint value is the smallest y value that I see, right? So those endpoint values, we'll count those as, as relative extreme values as well, right? Um, and, and so in fact, combining one and two, we get say three, which is that the uh, all absolute extrema are going to be relative extrema. Okay, so now we, we have the beginnings of a strategy here for finding these, these absolute max min values. Um, if we know how to find all the relative extreme values, then all we have to do is kind of compare them and, and the largest of the relative maxima is going to be the absolute maximum, right? The smallest of the relative minima is going to be the absolute minimum. Okay, um, so the next thing we need to know then is, well, how do we know that we found all these local extrema? Okay, uh, we need one more definition. We're gonna have a theorem and then we're gonna have a strategy.